gentel.ifl.tv in association with TK Global. With me, I've got trainer Dave Caldwell. We're here today at the press conference with Tony Bellew v David Hay. Firstly, I want to know how long did it take for negotiations to get Tony Bellew's name at the start of, of the fight? It wasn't, it wasn't about um, Tony Bellew agreeing. We just said fair what, what, what Tony wanted, and um, then it just seemed to take forever for everything to come back. Do you think it's right that Tony Bellew, having got the victory, that he has sort of the say on who enters the press conference first? We saw, for instance, David Haight entered the press conference today. I know do, these do you know little what? things make Listen, a difference. Do you, know, no, do you know what? That's just been a bit, of a bit of, as far as we're concerned, a bit of a laugh because for the first fight, he wanted us to be at the table seated, seated when he enters the room. So, you know, we weren't going to go that far. Um, t- Tony was just having a bit of a laugh about that, but... You know, little things like, you know, Bellew's name on the post the first this time around because they insisted that it had to be the other way around last time, you know. So when 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 you're in the ring after the fight and you've got V and he's saying, you know, if you oblige me, the terms are all on, on down to Tony Bellew now, um, whatever he wants goes and all that lot. But then when it comes to negotiating, you know, that, that, that went out of the window. When it comes to the, even the poster, he's done his own poster. Where is where it's hey Bellew and the, the, the heads are on the other side so really what we were saying in the ring was just was just rubbish really you know what I mean so you can't really take take what he's saying seriously David Hay today there was uh, sort of talk on his old training camp that he had the perfect camp he wasn't injured in the build up to that and Tony Bellew the same way had a great camp what are you expecting no, no fighter has a perfect camp Bullshit. No, we don't, they don't. That's probably a six-round fight, I don't. You all have niggles, you all, all bruise your knuckles, you all have a bit of sore ribs. Everybody has problems and injuries. Um, some fighters just get on with it, and some fighters moan about it. Um, you know, So I don't believe when, when, when it's all right, it's perfect. Are you happy with how it went uh, to the best of your ability and, both, and your fighter's ability? Then yes, you know, as far as I'm concerned, yes. Could things have gone better? Yes. It's probably the same for him, you know. And both men will go and, and train for this fight to the best that they can again, and hopefully, no injuries, no niggles, no nothing. But if there was an injury before the fight, his sparring partners didn't know about it. So I don't know, I don't know, you know. But it, you know, the first five rounds. There was nothing there to say that there was an injury going into it. When he did the public workout and everyone was talking about how sharp he was and how fast he was, there was nothing being spoken about it. You know, if you got an injury and things like that, and if you thought your, your Achilles was about to go, um, you wouldn't be doing a public workout. You know, you just wouldn't. David Hay made reference today that he doesn't believe Tony Bell is as hungry as he was. The first time his motivation seemed to be secure in his there's, family's there's, there's uh, nothing, future. What, what do, how do you respond to that? You cannot question hunger on Tony Bell. He eats for us both. You can tell that. Now, listen, some fighters are motivated by money. One of the fighters here is motivated by money. The other fighter has never been motivated by money. Boxing is the way that he makes money for his family. He makes money out of it, but he loves to fight. And he's just fortunate that that's the highest earner that he's got in his arsenal of his capabilities. Um, But he's not motivated by money. He's motivated motivated by proving everybody wrong again and smashing David in. You know, everybody says that you know, we, it, it won. It, it won the world title. It still didn't get respect for a lot of people. He's beat David A. It still not got respect for a lot of people. He's a kid that I've always said he'll never get full respect. You know, it's, it's, it's just one of those fighters that isn't going to get the credit he deserves. And again, he's the underdog. Everybody's saying, "Oh, you got your fluke it, you got look at." That's his motivation. Proved you. I didn't get look at. Here you go. What are you going to say this time? You know. And so he's very, very motivated. David A doesn't want to be, you know, pinning his hopes that, uh, that, that if the fight gets hard and gets tough, where's his motivation? Is he going to be training as hard? Is he motivated? No, there's nothing to worry about. That. Are you guys pinning your hopes on David Hay breaking down? No, we never pinned his hopes on that last time. You know, I, I said it would happen, but we never pinned our hopes on it. 
for the first fight, I expected a lighter David. I expected him to be 15 and a half. So on. I said to I said to Eddie, I said to everybody, I thought he'll be about 15 and a half. So I thought 15, 10 at max. When he got them on them scales, he was 16 stone. I'm like shocked. Like wow. He looks a lot lighter he, today, he, doesn't he? He is. He's, he's, he's going to be light. What what I expected last time, he will be this time. I expect him to be sharper, faster, more you know, more more explosive, more more dynamic. You know. And he fought, he fought clumsy, he fought because it was too heavy, it was way too heavy, loading up on every shot, he won't do that this time. Do you think chance. his weight coming in like that has any bearing on he, the old Achilles he, injury? He, he, know, he knows that he can't fight a 16 stone, he knows that, he knows it's too heavy and too slow, too, in, in that shape that it was in. That's why he's, he's sleeping, he looks, he looks well, he looks really well, it's the first thing you notice. You know, I, I thought the first fight he would model himself on the Macronelli win. I think this fight he will do, you know, physically and, and being a sharp and, and triggering. But now he's got um, Ishmael Salas, who's a very, very good coach, a really, you know, one of the top, top coaches in the world. Um, and that will add another dimension to him, he'll have more rhythm, you know, he'll, 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 he'll have a little bit more thinking about it. And like Ishmael says, they'll look to win every round rather than just looking to knock him out. And I believe what he's saying when he's saying, you know, I don't, I don't know what round it is, but I, I expect to knock him out. It's pretty much the same as what, what we think. You know, I don't know, I don't know what round it'll be, but I expect Tony to knock him out. You know, one thing you've got to remember: all those people out there uh, being so abusive to Tony Bellew and myself about the first fight. He was fuck all wrong with him for the first five rounds. It was in there. Remember, you all said that one or two rounds, as soon as he gets it on chin, he's getting blasted. As soon as he gets it on chin, he's stretched out. He's saying as soon as he gets him on chin, he's going to put him on spill, right? He got hit on the chin in that fight. Nothing happened. So don't discount Bellew's chin, his whiskers. Now, you mentioned Ishmael Salas. You've got the look of a younger Ishmael Salas about you a little bit. What? We're about the same height. I, about, I'm taller than him. So, he, so all the shit that he was giving about the height, <laughs> he's now employed a coach that's shorter than me. What's that about? This is my point. Uh, last time in the build-up, you got a lot of stick about... <laughs> can't use David that anymore. ...about holding the pads for a heavyweight, etc. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Ishmael Salas joining David Hayes' team? I think, it, I think it's brilliant for him. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a, like I said, he's a good coach. But he's short, and he's going to struggle to lift them off. <laughs> 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 but you know what? If, if if he has any 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 worries about it, I feel his pain. I can you give him any pain. advice? Is there any advice you can give him working with a smaller coach? Is there anything you would say? Any? No. Sort of listen, he don't need advice over me. He's a, he, listen, I, I like him. He's a, I've, I've actually been up against him before. Against Ishmael? Yeah. yeah Is that with Jamie McDonald? Jamie McDonald against Kamada. Um, I rate him. He's, good, he's a very good coach. Uh, and you know, I, I've got nothing but respect for him. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I don't expect any short ass jokes off the team here. There you go. All jokes aside, he's most honest, great coach. You've only got 17 more world champions to catch him up as well, currently. Oh, that'll never happen, mate. I'll never, I'm not, in the, I'm not, I'm not going to be around that long. Well, we hope you stick around a bit longer. Thank you very much for all of your time today, sir. Thank you. I'll catch you soon. Thank you. Thank you.